message is for Dorn Robbins. If you're available to teach an English class beginning immediately at Los Angeles Trade Technical College, please call the chairperson of the Liberal Arts Department. We have classes available day and evening and Saturday morning. We look forward to hearing from you. Paul Duax. Scott told me, asked me to tell my story a little bit. I'll be brief. Uh, like many of you, I work at a lot of campuses. I teach at Sierra College. I teach at American River College. I teach at Woodland Community College. I teach at National University. I teach at California College of Technology. I teach at Sacramento State University, Sacramento. I teach at the University of California in Davis. But that's not new to you. You teach a lot of places too. You get to Oceanside. I leave at 12.15 for my 1 o'clock class and get there just in time for class. And then I get out at 3.20 and if I don't leave by 3.30 I get stuck in traffic. This message is from Linda Janakis, Janakis, and uh, how are you pronouncing your name? I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. When I went into teaching, little did I know I'd be getting many such calls on or about the first day of a semester or that in some cases, I'd be hired over the phone. I'm calling to see if at all possible today you are interested in coming in for an interview. I also quickly learned that only a minority of instructors are hired permanently, while the majority of instructors work by the semester, sometimes on call, much like temporary office or factory workers. You know, all of our office hours that are donated for free at many of the campuses, no health benefits, all the grading papers, taking the field trips, preparation for things, all of that, for most of us, is voluntary, if you want to put quotes around that, contributions back to the school. Our part-time faculty, they don't have um, an office, they don't have computers to work from at the school, they are lucky if they get a voicemail, so they don't have nearly as many benefits as a full-time faculty does but they um, do the same job, they teach the same quality ed education. A few colleges pay teachers for up to one office hour. But there's another problem. I'm in the English department, there are 90 part-time instructors, we have two offices. Having only two offices for 90 instructors isn't too bad, considering most instructors across the state have little more than a mailbox to conduct business or to communicate with students privately. Some of us would say, well, you could come see us in our office, which is our car in the parking lot, or you could come see us in the restroom where we conduct office hours. Part-time isn't the only term used to describe the majority of college teachers. This partly paid instructor teaches 27 hours a week at three colleges, but still couldn't earn as much as his colleague earn, who teaches 12 hours a week at one college. Such inequities have turned many teachers into road scholars or freeway flyers, defined as instructors who work at multiple jobs or teach at more than one campus. I could very well end up being at four places in one day from Davis, which is about 17 miles south of where Sac City is, to Sac State, which is about eight miles from where Sac City is, to Sierra College, which is about 30 miles from where Sac City is. Guys like teaching five, six classes between SMC and then East LA College, and then I was teaching a creative writing class in poetry at UCLA. Right now, I'm fortunate enough that I have a second job, or maybe a third job, or maybe a fourth job, I'm not sure which, but I have other jobs so that I can uh, cobble something together financially to be able to make it. On the day I interviewed her, Joan was participating in graduation ceremonies as a volunteer. Your freeway flyers teaching in three different areas in one day. It poses a problem because it doesn't leave enough time for that person to stay on campus to not only meet with the students, but to meet with fellow colleagues, find out what's going on, to meet with the deans or the president's office. Because they're not paid for preparation and grading, uh, 
they are only paid for their teaching hours. They have to teach way more than a full timer does, and, they, and therefore they have to run around from one campus to another to put together a, a, a livable wage. Um, as well, they're only allowed to work 60% of a full time uh, load at any one college, so they need to run around. So I just work as much as I can and hope that uh, I can save enough money to retire and not have to eat dog food when I'm old. I met George at his tiny apartment that he shares with his wife. With barely enough room for one person to get about comfortably, I waited in the hall. Uh, from here, I will drive down the 405 freeway to Long Beach on Bellflower Boulevard and I'll go south. He, he has to drive across the city and it worries me because he's in a motorcycle and he, he has to drive the motorcycle otherwise he couldn't, he couldn't work at two, at two places or three places at the same time because he only has like an hour to get from you know, Long Beach State University to Santa Monica College and with the traffic in a car he, you know, he just cannot make it and so that's why he uses the motorcycle and I worry because you know, he's in the motorcycle on the freeways and that worries, worries me a lot that he has to be in the motorcycle because you know you never know an accident can happen and it took me three separate trips to follow George on a typical 14-hour day spread over three colleges We are treated as second-class employees in most ways, from choosing our chapter chairs to, at, at Southwest, to using the faculty restrooms, to uh, having status. During the week, he's, you know, he's very tired and, uh, with stress and I try not to, you know, talk to him, um, try to, you know, avoid him because sometimes he just coming from the freeway and with students, you know, being at three different places and so so that way, you know, I can, I, I let him rest so that way we don't, we don't get into an argument. From a humanistic point of view, I agree that this is, is it's insanity. But on the other side of it, I weigh in that I also recognize that we are serving the needs of our community. The issue is also an issue of money. The state of California creates only one source of money for colleges like ours. The state allocates community colleges about $4,800 per student. It gives the University of California system about $25,000 per student.